This is the College Football Countdown to Kickoff Show on 97.3 ESPN with your host, Nick Costco. We're taking you up to the kickoff of Rutgers football. Now, live inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, here's Nick Costco. Live inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's the College Football Countdown and Kickoff Show. I'm your host, Nick Costco. Thanks to Billy Schwein for having me on for a crossover, as always. Uh, we are not at Rutgers University today. Uh, take a little break today. No, don't worry. They are at home. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. And we will lead you up to the kickoff of Rutgers football right here on 97.3 ESPN. Rutgers hosting Liberty today. And, oh, yes, Liberty, yes, Liberty is a uh Josh stop it <laughs> stop giving don't do that jingle please Liberty is a 7 point favorite on the road at a Big 10 school This is it folks this is the end this is where we don't do this anymore I can't take it and that's probably part of the reason why I'm not up there today and even no I'm just kidding we there's a lot of events going around here on town in town square media so uh I am uh, back here in studio. Uh, you can you can catch me on the air next week. College football countdown to kickoff show two thirty p.m. will lead you into Rutgers, uh, Illinois. How about that? A little barn burner for a three thirty action at Illinois. Uh, for today's show, we're going to dive into it all. We're going to break down the rankings. We are going to look at the big games of the day. Some playoff scenarios. I'll give you my four pack of picks as always. 15 and 13 on the season. One and three last week, folks. Terrible. We were 14 and 10, and now 15 and 13. No good, not at all, but we're still in the green. Also, going to do a Rutgers football ticket giveaway. And before you say, no, I don't want those, don't give me, don't, don't worry. They are Penn State football tickets. Penn State hosting Rutgers November 30th uh, at Penn State. It's senior day for the Nittany Lions. If you want those tickets, text in your name, 609-403-0973, 609-403-0973. Penn State football ticket giveaway November 30th versus Rutgers. If you are our winner, we'll have them for you right here at the 97.3 ESPN studios. You come in, pick them up when we are open, and they are yours for free. Two tickets to Penn State and Rutgers, November 30th at Penn State, 609-403-0973. Text in for your chance to win as Billy just gave away a pair of tickets. All right, let's dive into it here as we have um, the rankings so far uh, throughout the season. The, the, the biggest change to me or the biggest uh, takeaway I have out of this, uh, out of these rankings is we're getting close now to the time where we're going to get the college football playoff rankings officially. So we're still going by the AP poll and, of course, the coaches poll as well. But Bama stays the course. They're number one. Clemson continuing to drop despite the fact that they are winning. And it's amazing to me because Trevor Lawrence is was such a hyped quarterback last year. Don't get me wrong. I do like uh, Trevor Lawrence a lot. I do. And you can make the argument that he would have been the number one overall pick in the 2019 NFL draft should he have been eligible after being a true freshman in college, leading Clemson to a national championship. But they're dropping. I know I know Clemson's 7-0. They're still getting first place votes. But if you look at some of these games they've played, again, Georgia Tech, they dominate. Texas A&M, good win. They're ranked number 12. They beat them at home 24-10. They dominate Syracuse. Okay. But then they beat this is a Charlotte they dominate. And that's not really impressing anybody. And Trevor Lawrence is turning the ball over. They just edge out North Carolina 21-20. They have an unimpressive, again, I say unimpressive, you know, they're beating some of these teams by, you know, 20, 30 points. They beat Florida State 45-14 and Louisville 45-10. to But they're, 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 just not impre- they're not impressive victories in the, in the minds of the voters and also uh, the, ra- the, the rankings just because they play in the god-awful ACC. The ACC is dog you know what I, I can't believe how bad it is Clemson is the only team in that conference that has any good look at Ohio State Ohio State's undefeated they are number three now they dominate FAU Cincinnati and Indiana okay and Miami of Ohio all right but they blow out Nebraska on the road they beat a, a, a previously ranked number 25 Michigan State 34 to 10 and they blow the doors off Northwestern 50, 52 to 3 Clem, Ohio State has not had a close game all season long and now they'll really truly prove themselves today 
They have a home game at noon against Wisconsin. Wisconsin's coming off the upset loss to Illinois just last week. But if Ohio State blows out Wisconsin, you can make the argument that Ohio State is the number one team in the country. Because I look at Alabama again. The SEC is good this year. It's better than, than, than in years past. But Alabama isn't beating anybody either. Duke, New Mexico State, South Carolina. I think it's Southern Mississippi. Uh, I mean, my goodness gracious. Ole Miss at Texas A&M. Okay. Home against Tennessee. Come on, man. We know how great Alabama is. I'm one of the bigger Alabama proponents in this area of the country, if you can believe that or not. But they have Arkansas today. And who's Alabama really play? And there's no two attack of Aloha. He is hurt. Good thing they have a bye week after today after a god-awful Arkansas team before they host LSU. LSU right now is number two. They actually have a better argument for number one than Alabama right now because they – they dom- they, I shouldn't say they dominate, but they went on the road and beat Texas in their building. That game was 45-38, but it was not as close as that score indicated. And they also beat number 7 Florida at home. They have number 9 Auburn today. LSU has a better case to be number 1 right now in the country than Alabama, Clemson, or even Ohio State. So right now, these rankings are all out of whack, but of course we don't have the college football playoff rankings yet until, I believe, this coming week as we approach November. And But the, 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 the teams that... Really, no one's talking about it anymore as we, as we take a look at all these rankings and where, and where they really should be. Oklahoma is rolling through everybody. They're 7 0. How about Penn State? And I, I, I'll eat this because I was absolutely wrong at the beginning of the year. I thought Penn State was not going to be this good, not even close. And I mentioned with Billy Schwein just before that the, Sean Clifford is playing outstanding football right now. I thought nobody could replace Trace McSorley this year. And James Franklin, well, he's had his team really good every year, but. Is Penn State really going to be this good? I don't think so. They're, they're not going to compete with Michigan this year. Certainly not going to compete with Ohio State. And I, I don't think they're going to be, compete with, with uh, Wisconsin if they got to a conference championship game. But what has Penn State done this year? Blow out Idaho, blow out Buffalo. They edge it. Don't get me wrong. Edge Pittsburgh. That was a close game. Blow out Maryland. Blow out Purdue. They go on the road at Iowa and beat Iowa. And then they host Michigan, a good Michigan team, which are now now they're falling down a little bit. But they beat them 28-21. Those are two solid back-to-back victories. And I think Penn State is deserving of that top 10 ranking right now. Florida is back up and coming again after their loss to LSU. They're back up to number 7. They still have a shot at the playoff as well. Notre Dame 5-1. and one. Auburn uh, number 9 right now. Georgia, because of their loss uh, this year, they have, they're still at number 10. They had a bad loss. It was at home to South Carolina. But, again, we're going to look at that game as well today. Florida, or Sorry, that is next week. That, But they have a big game against Florida next week. Number 10, Georgia versus number 7, Florida. That's going to be huge for the SEC uh, championship uh, considerations considering you have Penn, or excuse me, Florida and Georgia in the same division. So your SEC uh, East winner is going to be Florida or Georgia. Uh, Missouri's 2-1 in the conference. Uh, no, 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 no. Missouri's not going to win the SEC championship game. It's going to be Florida or Georgia. And on the other side, it's going to be Bama, LSU, or Auburn. Because Auburn only has one loss. And they could they could really screw things up if they beat LSU today. Can you, can you imagine if Auburn goes into Death Valley and beats LSU? Then we're really all screwed up with these rankings. I don't know where to go from there. So kind of just to break down these scenarios a little bit. Also, we are giving away Penn State tickets. As I will remind you once again, 609 403 0973-609-403-0973. Text in your name, and we will pick out a winner from the text board if you want the Penn State uh, pair of tickets as they, as they take on Rutgers on November 30th. It's a home game for the Nittany Lions Senior Day. So if you want two free tickets to those game, to that game, uh, text in your name, full name, 609-403-0973. We'll pick a winner, and we'll, you'll be able to pick them up right here at the 97.3 ESPN Studios. And again, I the the more I've watched the SEC this year, I don't think. And again, I love Georgia. I've always loved Georgia. I'm a big Florida guy as well. I think both those teams could get to the playoff, but they have to win. The, they have to win. The, they have to win the the SEC. They have to win the conference, and they cannot lose another game. So they're going to have to beat. So Georgia, the Georgia Florida winner in the regular season, is going to have to go beat Bama, LSU, or Auburn in the conference championship to get to the playoff because they already have one loss. But the more I watch it because of that bad loss from Georgia and Florida not being able to edge out LSU, I, I'm just thinking right now the SEC winner is going to be out of the East, whether it's Alabama, LSU, or Auburn. And really, realistically, I think it's only going to be it's going to be Bama or LSU because of how good they are. And for how well uh, Joe Burrow is playing right now for the Tigers, I mean, my goodness, 29 touchdowns, three picks, about 2,500 yards this season. 
and they are 7-0. and Joe Burrow is your Heisman uh, front runner right now in front of Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Hurts right now. And isn't it funny as I transition? Nobody's talking about Oklahoma because they play in the Big 12. But is it, does nobody realize how well Jalen Hurts is playing this year? Every, every, everyone's forgotten about him. I shouldn't say forgot about him, but he's got 2,000 yards, 20 touchdowns, three picks on the year. Rushing-wise, he's got 705 yards on the ground and 10 touchdowns. The guy has 30 total touchdowns by himself. Over 2,700 yards passing and rushing. Nobody's talking about Jalen Hurts in Oklahoma right now. He leads the team in rushing. This guy left Alabama because Nick Saban preferred to attack of Aloha. What has Oklahoma done this year? Dominate Houston. Dominate, I don't know who the heck this is. Dominate UCLA. Dominate Texas Tech. Dominate Kansas. Pretty much run away with it from Texas. Dominate West Virginia. They have a bad Kansas State team today, and they're hosting uh, Iowa State in two weeks. But then they're at Baylor. They host TCU at Oklahoma State. They're going to beat everybody. They're not going to lose. They might get a rematch with Texas in the, in the Big 12 championship, but they're going to win that too. You can't stop that offense. Unless you're Alabama or LSU. Maybe Ohio State. You're not stopping Oklahoma's offense. They will make the playoff if they're undefeated. Nobody's talking about them. But what also stinks about these rankings and what's going to happen with the playoffs, it's the same thing every year. As long as Clemson's undefeated, they're going to get in. Despite how bad that ACC. The ACC is the worst Power 5 conference in the country. Yes, the Pac-12 is better. The Pac-12 is better than the ACC right now. Because Oregon, Utah, they're still hanging around. And guess what? Arizona State's ranked two. Guess what? Oregon and Utah are in the top 12. They can still make the playoff. Name me another ACC team that's going to make the playoff. Wake Forest? Can Wake Forest go 11-1 and then beat Clemson? Can they beat Clemson? No. They're in the same division as Clemson. So riddle me this. Say Wake Forest goes 11-1 and upsets Clemson. At Clemson, by the way, they they still have to beat, you know, Virginia, Pittsburgh, or Duke in the conference championship to be 12-1. Would a 12-1 Wake Forest team make the playoff? They're currently they're, they're ranked 25th right now. But is a 12-1 Wake Forest team who has played nobody, only beating Clemson and winning a conference title, would they get in over a one-loss SEC winner or uh, excuse me, loser? Give me this. Bama and LSU are number are one and two right now, right? Say Bama wins the SEC, 13 and 0, right? LSU's 12 and 1. Only loss is to Bama in season. They don't go to the conference championship game. You mean to tell me that a 12 and 1 Wake Forest team, not, a, not, not, not that it's gonna happen, but a 12 and 1 Wake Forest team only beating Clemson, only Clemson. Winning a god-awful ACC is going to get in over a 12-1 and LSU? No. As unfair that might be, you put up Wake Forest against LSU, who's winning that football game? Even, on, even at Wake Forest, who's winning? LSU. So again, there's no, sh- there's no shot for anybody else in the ACC. And that's what, that's what these rankings are. You can pretty much pinpoint who has a shot. I, I noted them today through number 14 today because Baylor somehow is still undefeated. And obviously, if you're a Big 12 uh, champion and you're undefeated, you're gonna probably going to get into the playoff. So if Baylor goes 13-0 somehow, they'll probably get in. They're going to they're, they're, they're gonna have to get through Oklahoma to do that. But that's it. Your playoff representatives, you're going to get one from the SEC. You're going to get one from the Big Ten. So it's probably going to be Ohio State. You're going to get Clemson because they're not losing. Despite how bad, I mean, they have looked shaky this year, but that conference is so bad. You have an SEC winner, a Big Ten winner, an ACC winner if it's Clemson. And you're going to get the Big 12 winner or you're going to get somebody else. You're not getting the Pac-12 unless there's a couple losses from the top teams. You're going to get a wild card team because you're going to get two from one conference again. Whether it's two from the Big Ten or whether it's two from the SEC, that's going to happen. Notre Dame, independent. They've lost to Georgia, but now Georgia has that bad loss. And now Notre Dame's above Georgia. So does it really bump up anymore? They're at Michigan today. That's it. 
Virginia Tech, Duke, Navy, Boston College, Stanford. Notre Dame might not even get in now. But there's no conference championship for them. You know how this goes, and I need to explain it to you folks again. You're going to get the SEC. You're going to get the Big Ten. You're going to get Clemson in the ACC. That is it. And you will get a second team from the Big Ten or the SEC once again. Is it fair? Maybe not. But you need to tell me who else even has a remote shot at knocking off one of those teams. It's the way it goes. All right, we'll take a quick break. And on the other side, we are going to break down some of the big matchups today. And also, we are giving away Penn State football tickets. Penn State versus Rutgers on November 30th at Penn State. It's senior day for the Nittany Lions. You text in 609-403-0973, 609-403-0973. Text in your full name and we will pick a winner from the text board. And if you are the winner, make sure you stay locked in here for the next about 30 minutes or so. You stay locked in here. You'll listen for your name. If you are the winner, we'll have them in for we'll have them in an envelope for you and we'll leave them here at Town Square Media here on Tilton Road. You can get that here live. Pick them up when we are open, and you are going to Penn State Rutgers for free. Again, 609-403-0973. Text your full name in for your chance to win Penn State football tickets on November 30th. When we come back, again, we are going to go over the big games of the day, so make sure you keep it locked here. You are listening to the College Football Countdown and Kickoff Show right here on 97.3. ESPN. This is the College Football Countdown to Kickoff Show with Nick Costco on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. Back here on the College Football Countdown to Kickoff Show. Nick Costco with you bringing up to the kickoff of Rutgers football before we send it out to Chris Carlin, Ray Lucas, and Eric Legrand as Rutgers hosts Liberty today. The Liberty Flames. Liberty's a seven-point favorite at Rutgers. Uh, I just looked at Twitter, and it's just getting more and more depressing. My good buddy Brian Fonseca, who I actually graduated with, you can catch him on NJ Advanced Media, uh, writing about Rutgers and a bunch of other things. Uh, you know, Yankees, Giants. He just he does it all. Good, he's a good dude. I'll read you his tweet uh, word for word. <laughs> Greetings from SHI Stadium. Just took a stroll through the Scarlet Lot. I've had more trouble finding a parking spot there for class on a random Wednesday night. This place is a ghost town with 45 minutes to kick off. There is just no juice here. Boy, I couldn't agree more. I was there for homecoming last week, and I'll tell you what. uh, It was a decent turnout for what what it is right now. I can't even tell you the announced attendance last week because I I didn't get an exact number, but the announced attendance for uh, for college is always way way overinflated. But there, there, there couldn't have been more than 15,000 people there, there last week for homecoming. And I saw a lot of people last week uh, from that, that I graduated with and guys that graduated with uh, or graduated a couple years before me. I, I saw a lot of alum come back, but there is absolutely no juice there. And that's what happens when you fire your coach midseason, whether it was deserved or not, and I think it was. But when you fire a coach midseason, the team, you know the team's going nowhere, and you're destined for another 1-11 season, and you have an interim head coach, uh, you're, you're two of your best offensive players want a red shirt, and you have a quarterback in there that you know can't throw a five yard out. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens when you, when you become a run oriented offense, where your quarterback is running it half the time as well. Uh, again, this is what happens. You know the team's going to stink, and so people are not going to waste their time and money. I get it. I I wouldn't either. I'm a dedicated, loyal alum of the school. I I broadcasted the football team for a couple of years as a student, and I'll tell you what. I would I would love to be there every week. I would love to support them every week, and I do. But but there's absolutely no reason that they should be watching Rutgers Liberty today, unless you're unless you're a Rutgers guy like me, or if you somehow got money on this game and you think Rutgers is going to cover seven points at home today. Which, by the way, I don't think they I don't think they are. So spoiler for one of my picks later, Liberty's minus seven. I, I'll already tell you that I'm picking Ruck, uh, picking Liberty to cover. I picked I picked them twenty eight to seven today. That's how bad that's how bad it is right now. Liberty's if Liberty wins today, they're going to go to a bowl game. That's their sixth win of the year if they win today, which they will. I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked if I see it otherwise. Again, you know, it, it is. It, it's bad. It really is. There, but if they go, and I, I tweeted back at Brian. You can follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Nick Costco fifty nine N I C K K O S K O five nine. I tweet a bunch about what I'm doing here with nine seven three ESPN high school football, college football, NFL, 
uh, my Rutgers and Stevens stuff as well. You can, I, mean, I, I, I tweet about way too much. UFC, I'm very, I'm very upset about Ben Askren today, as Josh uh, saw me watching before I came on air today. Oh, boy. In any event, I tweeted back at Brian, and I said, you know what, is Shiano back yet? And, again, I go back to a couple of years ago while I was a student. They fired Kyle Flood for, Ruck- for Rutgers, and the, one of the, one of the uh, rumors was, should they bring back Shiano then for, 20, for the 2016 season? I said no. I said no because the sequel is never as good as the, as the original, 95% of the time. The sequel is never as good. Josh is a movie guy. He knows this, too. The sequel is never as good as the original, almost 100%, 95, 95% of the time, 95 There are some. Godfather 2. Terminator 2, just name, two, just name a couple. Uh, but I said, no, I don't want him back. And they brought in Ash. I'm like, all right, defensive-minded guy, Ohio State, has the national championship ring, defensive coordinator from there, first time as head coach. You have a bit of a, I would say, easier job. You don't have to, you don't have to win 10 games every year. You can win six. You can win eight. You can get the bowl games. Maybe you get an occasional upset. No, he couldn't do that. He was an absolute disaster. Now I want Shiano back because this program is dead. The program is absolutely dead. There is no juice at all. When Ohio State comes into Piscataway in a couple weeks, it's going to be maybe 25,000 people, maybe 30. And there's going to be about 20,000 Ohio State fans because they know they can infiltrate the lower bowl of SHI Stadium. It's going to be embarrassing. There's going to be a lot of scarlet red in there, but guess what? It's going to be scarlet red and gray for Ohio State. It's going to be embarrassing. You bring a guy back like Shiano... To reinvigorate this program, Every, most of the fan base wants him back anyway. I think he could be successful in a second stint. He absolutely could. All you need is six wins and do a bowl game. That's all you need. I tweeted back at Brian and I said, you know what? If they go 3-9 and nine next year, who cares? If Shiano's the head coach, you're going to have thirty to 35,000 people regularly at that, at that stadium. The season ticket sales are going to go right back up. As everyone's going to say, oh, Shiano's back. We're going to give him 10 years to fix this program. They absolutely would. He's going to have a long leash. The next coach will have a long leash, unless it's an absolute disaster again. A guy like Shiano will have a long leash if he comes back. So, again, it's bad. I had to get that off my chest again, as I do every week. But uh, don't count on Rutgers covering today. Let's talk about some actual games today that are of utmost importance today. Number 13, Wisconsin. Number 3, Ohio State. That's a noon kickoff. Ohio State's way too good. Way too good. Justin Fields, again, I'm a huge Jake Fromm guy out of Georgia. Fields committed there, knowing that Fromm was a true freshman starter, thought he could beat him out, did not beat him out, and then he decided, you know what, I'm going to leave. And I don't fault it for it, because that's the freedom that these college kids have nowadays. You can play four games and then redshirt that same year still. You can still do that. And I like that rule. It gives these college kids more freedom, because they're completely controlled by the NCAA, and these programs have total control as well as the coaches. Coaches can, can go around wherever they want. Why well, can't players? To a certain extent, of course. But Justin Fields leaves Oklahoma, or excuse me, uh, Georgia, goes to Ohio State. And I'm thinking to myself, Justin Fields and Jake Fromm are two different quarterbacks. Fromm's a traditional pocket passer, stays in the pocket, doesn't turn the ball over. It's a solid quarterback. Justin Fields can run, more of a flasher type, would love, in the, would love a spread offense. So he goes there for Ohio State. Ryan Day takes over as the head coach. And now he's going off. Justin Fields is showing why he was the top quarterback of that recruiting class. But it's still a wonder he couldn't beat out Jake Fromm. I don't know what Kirby Smart saw. Maybe Justin Fields wasn't that good at the time. The system wasn't right. That's a big reason why. But Justin Fields is an outside Heisman candidate as well. He's only got about 1,500 passing yards. Okay, fine. But he's got 22 touchdown passes. He's only thrown one interception. He's got 291 rushing yards. He's got eight touchdowns on the ground. He also has 30 total touchdowns like Jalen Hurts. Justin Fields is showing why he's great. And he's going to be the quarterback there at least for next year, and then he might consider uh, going to the NFL early. You're telling me Wisconsin's going to stop that today at the horseshoe? You can run Jonathan Taylor 50 times today and hold the ball for 45 minutes. You're still not beating Ohio State today. I'm that confident in the Buckeyes today. And I can't wait to come back on the air next week and say, yes, I was wrong. Ohio State is that good. You want to talk about the Big Ten team that I think is the best chance to win a national championship? It's Ohio State, bar none. 
Wisconsin showed their true colors, not true colors, but they're vulnerable. They lost to Illinois. Illinois! In Champaign! Where nobody goes! You think Rutgers attendance is bad? Look at Illinois most years. They were probably thinking, oh, it's Wisconsin. We'll just come in, though. That's fine. And you know what? People probably, had, people probably had tickets to that game, but they were outside the stadium still tailgating. They're like, oh, wait, Illinois is winning here in the third quarter. Let's go inside the stadium. Wisconsin's not beating Ohio State today. It's not happening. Number nine, Auburn at number two, LSU. Big one of the day. Let me get right back to that. Number six, Penn State and Michigan State. We mentioned that before. That's a big game. Michigan State always tough at home, but Penn State just really so good today, or so good this year. And then number eight, Notre Dame at number 19, Michigan. If Jim Harbaugh wants any shot of saving his job this year, yes, I think they would say we're going to, quote-unquote, mutually part ways for the betterment of the university and you. They will certainly cut ties with Jim Harbaugh if he loses tonight. It's going to happen. Because if he loses tonight, there's no way in hell he's beating Ohio State later this year, even in Ann Arbor. It's just not happening. Jim Harbaugh has to win today to save his job. Otherwise, that's going to be a three-loss Michigan team going on four losses with the upcoming game against Ohio State. He's got to save his job here. He's got to save his ass. Number nine, Auburn. Number two, LSU is the big game today. The biggest game of the night, I would say, or of the entire slate. They're at 330. Bo Nix, true freshman stud at Auburn, but is he going to go into Death Valley and out and outgun Joe Burrow, especially the way Burrow's been playing this year? I, I can easily see LSU. I mean, this could be a shootout. Generally, you see an Auburn LSU game that ends in what? Maybe like 24 to 20, 20 to 13, some of those games. It's going to be like 42 to 28 today, 42 to 38, 42 to 30, whatever you want to call it. Burrow's putting up, I think, five touchdowns today. The over under is 59. Is it? So if we split that down in the middle, that's what, like 27 to like 21, r- roughly, if it, if it hits the under. So that's probably around a standard Auburn LSU score. But I, I I can't see that being less than 59. You have to hit the over on that. You want a prop bet, hit the over on Auburn LSU. I think so. I think I think Joe Burrow could lead the, Tiger, the, the LSU Tigers to six touchdown drives by himself. And then Bo Nix could sling it too. Auburn's going to at least score 24 points. Bet the over on that one. I'd say so. All right, we're going to step aside and take a quick break. On the other side, we will give you my picks of the of the day, 15 and 13 on the season. One and three last week, folks. It was bad. I'll give you my four-pack of picks. Also, text in your name, your full name, 609-403-0973. If you want Penn State football tickets, they host Rutgers on November 30th. 609-403-0973. Text in your full name. We'll pick a winner at the end of the show. And if we get, if we get your name and number... Be sure to let you know to come pick them up from our 97.3 ESPN studios. Make sure you keep it locked here. You're listening to the College Football Countdown to Kickoff show right here on 97.3 ESPN. This is the College Football Countdown to Kickoff show with Nick Costco on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. You get a shiver in the Back here on the College Football Countdown, the kickoff show right here on 97.3 ESPN. Nick Costco with you. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Nick Costco 59 N-I-C-K-K-O-S-K-O-5-9. Giving away Rutgers football tickets. Should be Penn State football tickets. I don't want to scare you away. <laughs> Penn State football tickets. They host Rutgers on, on November 30th, 609-403-0973. Text in your name and number, and we'll let you know the winner in about two minutes. Fast segment here. Got to give you my picks. 15 and 13 on the season. One and three last week. All right, first game, number 20, Iowa at Northwestern. Iowa's a nine and a half point favorite on the road. Northwestern is rebuilding. They are not good at all. And you saw the way they played against Ohio State. Oh, boy. That was bad. Josh, I don't know if you watched that on Friday, but my goodness gracious. Northwestern, the Chicago fans out there, Michael, the Michael Wilbons of the world, they had to leave that game early. That was bad. Iowa, minus 9.5 on the road. I like them. Northwestern's not good at all. Iowa, I think, has a bounce-back game here today, and they get the win. Minus 9.5, put your money on Iowa. Number 9, Auburn, at number 2, LSU. I think LSU is going to win, but 
Auburn plus 10.5 on the road. This is going to be the best game of the day. I like Auburn plus 10.5 on the road. They will cover. I don't think they're going to win, but I think they will cover. Put your money on Auburn plus 10.5. Maryland at number 17, Minnesota. Minnesota destroyed Rutgers last week. Big surprise there. Maryland is awful now all of a sudden. Minnesota is undefeated. P.J. Fleck has his team rolling. Dare I say Minnesota Golden Gophers college football playoff. Minnesota is minus 15.5 on, or excuse me, at home. At home, take Minnesota and the points. Maryland's awful. Minnesota, minus 15 and a half. And Liberty at Rutgers. I told you before, don't take Rutgers. Take, you, can't, you can't do this in New Jersey, folks. You better go to your outside bookies or you better go to Pennsylvania real quick and make this bet. Liberty's minus seven on the road at Rutgers. It's embarrassing. It opened at four. It opened at four, for God's sakes. God. Hello? Anybody home? Liberty! Liberty and Rutgers! Horrible! Take Liberty minus seven. Oh, I can't wait till 2020. Iowa minus nine and a half. Auburn plus ten and a half. Minnesota minus 15 and a half. And take Liberty minus seven. Josh, do we have a winner? from the text board for those Penn State football tickets. What do we got? You're teasing me. Who do we got? Joe Bellantine from Wildwood. Joe Bellantine from Wildwood. Does he have his number in there? Yes. He does have his phone number. All right, so I will. Joe, I'll give you a call if you're still listening, and I'll let you know where you can pick up these tickets in just a few minutes. So Joe Bellantine from Wildwood, you are our winner. You get two free tickets to Penn State versus Rutgers on November 30th. Congratulations to you. Big thanks to Josh Hennig for pushing all the buttons today. Oh, it's going to be a wild day of college football. you got to love it. We're going to send it out to Chris Carlin, Ray Lucas, and Eric Legrand live from SHI Stadium for the Rutgers Liberty game right here at noon. Enjoy the game today, everybody. I am Nick Costco saying so long. You can catch me next week on the College Football Countdown to Kickoff Show at 2.30 p.m. Eastern right here on 97.3. ESPN Rutgers Liberty coming up next. Have a good day.